Hello friends, I'm sitting here on a tree that has fallen in the forest. If you know Joseph Real, Beautiful Painted Arrows teachings, his mysticism, you know that trees are symbols of greatness. Trees rise up from the land and they reach up to the sky and they they join these, uh, these uh, terrestrial earth energies and the heavenly energies. And they, uh, they create the air that we breathe. And for this gift, they give up their mobility, their perspective, their entire lives are lived in one location. And every tree has a different kind of vibration and they take in all the elements. So what I wanted to do now in this video is to talk to you about the elements, the five elements that Joseph teaches about. And in fact, I have a copy of his book here, uh, the book Sound. This is his uh, magnum opus, his great work. And uh, if you don't know about this book, you really should get a copy because inside there are beautiful inspired illustrations that Joseph has done along with his teachings. The mysticism, the deep spiritual insights that he has seen and has been transmitting to us for a long time. And an interesting thing about these insights, including the five elements that we're going to talk about, is that many of the truths that you find when you get deeper into mysticism and aspects of the spirit. Many of these have been seen by different cultures, been different, seen by different people, and uh, have been communicated uh, sometimes in very similar ways. So I want to go through the five elements because uh, it's a perspective to a system of vibration and a system of energy and manifestation. We've talked before about how Wama Chi, the divine being, breathed and in this breath all of manifestation all of creation around us is is the byproduct of that and different cultures have seen different ways to interpret the uh, the energies around us if you start even with a simple form that uses two polarities um, you can look at Taoism uh, the the yin or yin and the yang. And you can see this expressed in different ways. Um, oftentimes in the mystical Taoist literature around Taoist alchemy, it's about balancing Khan and Li, fire and water. So these different ways of interpreting energy and the components behind energy are seen in many cultures. And what's interesting to me is Khan and Li is especially easy to get into because uh, if you've been in a house that's heated in winter and uh, the air can really dry out so the water element uh, is missing and it can be hard to breathe. Uh, you can get sick if you haven't had enough water in your system. You start to get dehydrated. Um, so there's really a balance of these elements of, of fire and water that we need. Uh, if you're cold, uh, you're not wrapped up well enough when when it turns cold outside or your feet are really cold in the winter uh, you can get sick that way because the heat element in your body is not uh, balanced or held in a good way so we're working ourselves up to a, a five element system i just talked about a, a two energy or two element system in, in Taoism uh, and chinese medicine yin and yang and then you also have in, in India a three-element system with the, the gunas and the doshas. And again, it's a very uh, similar uh, way of looking at the world, and you actually can classify people according to the dosha, what body type they are, personality type, and, and so on. And that helps the healers and the practitioners to know what elements, what foods are good for you, uh, etc. Now... When we come to the five element system, this five element system, uh, coincidentally or not, 
uh, between uh, Joseph and his Tiwa mysticism is also the same five elements that we see uh, in uh, the Far East, uh, especially in Hinduism. So those five elements, we're going to take a, a tour through those. The first element, uh, the way Joseph presents it, and uh, also in my understanding, and I look at these as a cycle. It's a cycle of emergence or a cycle of manifestation. And the first element uh, is associated with the sound. All these elements have sacred sounds. Uh, we can get into the platonic solids and shapes and colors and directions and all of that. But for, for us right now, we're just going to consider the, the traditional element and the sound. So the first element that comes into manifestation is the element of fire. And you can think about the Big Bang theory and how somehow you you have out of the nothingness a pre-somethingness and then there's a, there's a fire or an explosion uh, that, that seeds all of what will later become the energies of matter. So fire is the first thing to emerge and the sound is ah. So when we're looking to understand the element fire or to work with fire or to balance fire in our body, we can chant the sound ah. Uh, and in fact, there's so many sacred names, names of deities, uh, Alat, Allah, Amma, uh, Ashura, all, all of those varied names of both male and, and feminine deities. Many, many of them start and or end with the ah sound. Um, and when I think of the word uh, Brahma, there's also some consonants into play here. But for these five elements and the five sounds, we're focused on vowel sounds. These are the basic energies of the divine being are expressed in vowels. They're the basic qualities. So we start with ah, and ah is the element of fire. And ah is basically the emergence into manifestation of whatever it is that is being manifested, whether it's an idea, a concept, a form. Uh, the idea behind this teaching is that ah and fire is the first thing that really ignites or starts the whole process of being. Now, these elements continue in a cycle. Um, ah, fire, it brings us purity. That's the core characteristic. Then in the next step of manifestation, uh, the next quality, divine quality we need is with the vowel sound e, eh, uh, as in the color red has a e eh inside the middle of that word, e. Eh. And e, eh, the element that that represents is the earth. And the characteristic is relationship. So we started with a, uh, we, we generated some beingness. Uh, it's very important for that beingness to then enter into relationship with all things around it. So we start with a, uh, a, uh, we go to e, uh, and the earth is what we have as the direct proof or the direct carrier of our relationship to things. We live in a certain place on the earth. I'm sitting here on a fallen tree. This tree was connected to the ground over there. I live over there. There's a major city to my east. There's a relationship that's formed because of our place or our position, and it's the earth element that has enough holding power to establish what our place is. All right, so we started with ah, which is the fire element, which is purity. We moved to e, eh, which is the earth element, which is relationship or placement. And now what we have done is we've started an arc of ascent. This is an arc of ascent in beingness and an arc of ascent in awareness. Ah, E, and at the third element, we're going to reach the, the apex 
of this arrangement. And this element here at the top, the element is the air element. The quality is awareness. And the sound is E. So we have A, E, E. Fire, earth, air. Purity, relationship, awareness. So what happens is the, the beingness is manifested. It, it establishes who it is as an identity in its pure essence. But that identity must continue to unfold in terms of its relationships to other identities, other beings that are there. And once that foundation or that net or that web is established of these relationships, uh, there's a solid enough foundation then where awareness or the ability to be a conduit for descending inspiration can occur. So you can, you can remember this because of the air. And we've talked before about how people seeking inspiration maybe would climb up to a mountain and that it's cold there and that inspiration, these crystalline thought forms come down from the divine places, from the heavens, from the cosmos and, and they come down and they are able to be picked up on or read by somebody who's attuned, somebody who's open to vibration and sensitive. So we go through this, this arc of beingness, ah, establish who we are, e, establish more who we are through the relationship with others, and e, into awareness and the air element. And what happens then is these seeds come down. These inspirations come down because there is a container that has been formed through the previous steps. And now the divine being wants to manifest more of itself, wants to awaken qualities that were latent in the human or the whatever the being is. And it wants to alchemically change plant the seeds and then have those seeds develop. So in this process, when we get to this point here, we're, we're in the awareness and we can definitely chant ah to focus on our purity or to purify ourselves. Uh, if you've been in a situation and you, you want to cleanse yourself with sound, you can go ah. Eh, if you are not sure about your relationship to a place or a person, you can go uh, by yourself and chant eh. And if you're seeking insights about something, you can chant e, ah, eh, e. Now, once we've reached the place of inspiration, the, the mountain, the top of this arc of ascent and descent, there are the inspirations that were received. And now the next thing we need to do is to be receptive, to allow those seeds, those inspirations, those thought forms, the divine inspiration, those aspects of, of the great beingness to come into us and rest. So the next position on our way back down is the element water. The sound is O. And the quality is childlike innocence. It's the just total receptivity, total daydreamy, just reverie type reflection on those qualities. And these are things that are typically discouraged in children when they are sent off to uh, our school system. But if you're going to pursue the mystical path, they are qualities that you need to reawaken. So in our receptivity, in refocusing and reabsorbing, uh, gazing at clouds, uh, there's a lot of mystical practices that involve concentrating on certain forms, uh, certain deities, etc. So we've gone through a, e, e, o. Okay, we're in the receptivity, the childlike innocence. We're letting that new inspiration come into us. And again, you can chant the sound of each of these vowels to awaken those qualities inside of us. So we're at the O, we're at water. So the seeds from the inspiration have come down and they are mingling, mixing, infusing 
into our psyche, into our psycho-spiritual, physical conglomerate here, body, mind, spirit, beingness as a, as a unity. And the next thing that will happen is the completion of this cycle. So, a, e, i, o, the last vowel, the fifth element, the sound is u, the u sound. And the quality is carrying or holding. And the element is ether. So we've gone through a, e, i, o, u. We've gone through fire, earth, air, water, ether. We've gone through purity, relationship, awareness, childlike innocence, and carrying. So this is a complete gestalt, or a complete process of beingness that it goes through uh, whenever any divine quality manifests. And in fact, these could be viewed as phases that we go through in our development uh, from children with a lot of fire energy, the little infant there just working stuff out, just, just getting their body and getting uh, ability to walk and all of that, and then really exploring relationships as a child and young adult, and then awareness, you know, college, working in the intellectual spheres or, or whatever our job is, and then later reflecting back on, on what we've been through. Is, is this what we want for our life? And, and accepting that we don't know anything and being open as children. And then as, as we get older to realize what do we have? What has been deposited? What is the wisdom that we have that we're carrying, that we're bringing forth uh, to all beings? So this is the cycle. These are the five elements. Um, a few interesting things. Um, Again, we said you can chant these, so you could chant a, e, i, o, u. Uh, there are some cultures around the planet where this is a chant. A, e, o, u, a, e, o, u. Um, specifically, I've mentioned before, I think, on another video that it's said by the mystics that of all the names of the divine being, who, which has the oo sound in it, who is the only one that humans can pronounce. All of the other real words or names for the divine are, are not really pronounceable by human beings. What we say that comes close is just an approximation, but the word who. So in many mystical traditions, there is an emphasis on using the phrase who, because who gives us a clear insight into the entire cycle. Uh, the other thing I should say uh, in Joseph's teachings is there's a, there's a related concept which we'll have to explore more in another video, but that is that uh, all of creation is flashing in and out rapidly. We're here and then we're not here. We're here and then we're not here. And this strobe effect happens so frequently that we don't even realize that it's happening. And this is not just Joseph's teaching, but in many mystical traditions there is a realization that we're not really this solid form, that matter is not this fixed configuration that it appears to be. And my realization has been that the cycle that Joseph talks about of the five elements, I, I, O, U, and this pulsing of beingness, that the pulse that's made is a complete set of I, I, O, U. These things are happening rapidly, and I believe it's my perception that these sounds or similar sounds are also happening with each pulse in the cycle. So I invite you to consider these elements. Joseph talks about these in more detail uh, in this book, Sound. It's, it's really an excellent book. It's, uh, it's almost like a textbook for the mystical. And it is a book that you could literally spend years absorbing and then uh, 
it's very important to not just uh, do the head stuff with this book, not just let it sink uh, only to the level of the mind. But when you catch something from this book, do something about it. Uh, go into a sound cycle with it of I, E, O, U. Uh, do some artwork. Uh, see is there a song or a dance or some way, and that's what this process is about. This process does not just arise and stop in the mental realm, up here in the air, in the E sound, but it continues to integrate what we have received and realized back into the human form, back into a concrete experience that's living again, so that we've, we, we've reawakened more aspects of ourselves and we enter the cycle again, and we go through again, and we become more of who we are and more of all that is meant to be here by being able to go through this process. So I highly recommend the book it's just an amazing work. Uh, all these elements are detailed within it, and I'm really sure that you will get a lot out of it. If you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, contact me on the YouTube channel. You can also send me an email at anayat2012 at gmail.com. Thanks.